Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 1st, the first day of meteorological spring. Called meteorological spring because March, April, and May are the three months most associated with spring. Technically, the sun's rays don't start moving north of the equator until March 20th. I think 11.33 a.m. is when they reach that point and they start moving into the northern hemisphere as the Earth's tilt goes towards the sun. So looking at today, you can see this atmospheric river out here. It's weakened a bit. It's still going on into Oregon and portions of Washington. And this is going to shift a little bit north still too. So we're not done with our precipitation from this, but the atmospheric river is weakened and it has taken uh, aim at Oregon a bit more this morning around the rest of the country right now things are really quiet all the activity is here in the Pacific Northwest as you can see our parent low that's been guiding this atmospheric river into our region bringing extremely heavy rainfall amounts for Pacific, uh, portions of the Pacific Northwest and the atmospheric river is characterized by this high that sends it it tends to set up over the Great Basin here and with the parent low here we're kind of in the strong gradient with the subtropical moisture just streams into our region so jumping right into things here, this is the atmospheric river system rating chart. So as you can see, um, once you get above a, a certain moisture flux of 250 IVT, this is water vapor transport, you start to get into atmospheric river conditions. And when you're below 24 hours there, you can see it's really weak. And anything below 250 is really not an atmospheric river. We were seeing some totals up towards 1,000, and this event lasted over 48 hours. So you can see why it was characterized as a Category 4 atmospheric river. And when you look at these things, you know, they talk about mostly hazardous, also beneficial. Some regions, like eastern portions of the state, it's very beneficial. Some portions on the western side of the state where you're creating landslide conditions or you're just, it's just pure runoff and it's causing flooding into rivers and streams. Of course, it's mostly hazardous. So it depends on where you are on what kind of benefits you're seeing from an atmospheric river. And obviously, when you look at a Category 1, it says primarily beneficial, but if you just went through a Category 4 or a 3 or you're already totally saturated, even a Category 1 can be primarily hazardous. So each one, each atmospheric river is, is going to be classified differently as it moves in. But here is the rating. You can see based on duration and just how much water vapor transport is being brought into the area is basically how these things are rated. So checking out the rainfall amounts across the area here, you can see that rain shadow effect. The Olympic Mountains are pretty efficient blockers of atmospheric rivers, and you can see that reflected in the totals here up over Whidbey Island, the San Juans, and the interior, Skagit Whatcom, north portions of Snohomish County. And you can see how through the Chehalis Gap, that atmospheric river was just barreling down on the area and causing really heavy rain. I think we're over five inches at my home here now during the storm event. We had over three inches of rain during yesterday. And you can see kind of the transition there, Seattle North here. And you can see down here in Portland and Western Oregon, that atmospheric river, you can see where the cutoff was. And the coastal range in Oregon is not as an efficient blocker of these atmospheric rivers as the Olympics are. So you can see some of that precipitation getting into the Portland area, fairly, fairly heavy amounts there. And then as this atmospheric river was continuing on, which it's still doing, by the way, it was impacting some areas of uh, Idaho Panhandle and Western Montana here with some pretty good amounts also. And, you know, anything that falls out in Eastern Washington or Eastern Oregon is generally a beneficial and a welcome site to get that rainfall to help out the farmers. But again, this really extreme drought is down here in the eastern slopes of the Oregon Cascades, and they didn't get much help out of this. So maybe there's a system coming in the future that can help out with that. But yeah, this is a pretty good map showing these different rainfall tolls across the region. And like we talked about before, the rest of the country is really quiet. All the actions up here in the Pacific Northwest with a few winter weather advisories going on, I believe that is. Well, portions of Montana there is. Avalanche warnings for western Montana and Idaho still ongoing. Some high wind warnings still in effect too. And there are some still local flood warnings for rivers and streams around the Pacific Northwest, especially western Washington as the Green River is actually under a flood warning right now too. And some flood watches still going on. And here's the day one excessive rainfall outlook. So there still is some concern for that remnant atmospheric river flowing into western Oregon here in the extreme southern Cascades of Washington, but nothing like yesterday. And here is Spokane. So they're talking about the rising river potential. <clears throat> they set some rainfall records yesterday for Spokane and Pullman, or they tied their Spokane did. Um, if you guys are living in the eastern portions of the state, check out the Coco Raz website here and become a uh, volunteer precipitation observer. Um, check it out at their website there. You can see that cocoraz.org. And here's our March outlook that came out yesterday. You can see the Pacific Northwest 
It's supposed to have below average temperatures and above average precipitation. We'll take a good look at the extended forecast. We have some pretty good model disagreements, some pretty interesting systems on some of the models and not so much on other models. And here's for Pendleton talking about the differences between a flood warning and a flood watch. A flood watch is when flooding is possible. A warning means flooding is imminent or it is occurring. So it's good to know the differences there when you're dealing with your local forecast, but the difference between a warning and a watch. A watch means it's possible and it looks uh, likely, and a flood warning means imminent or ongoing. And here's the bottom line here for the Northwest Avalanche Center. They're talking about the, the atmospheric river has drastically changed conditions in the mountains, Snoqualmie Pass. This, is, this goes for all the Cascades of Washington and even some of the uh, Oregon Cascades. So it's going to take some time for the snowpack to adjust its load. So limit your exposure in the backcountry and watch out for those avalanche signs. Come to this website. It's excellent. It's got all kinds of good information. We're not going to go into it here, but there's a forecast discussion they do. So check it out if you're going to the backcountry. And there's still avalanche warnings, of course, for portions of the Idaho Panhandle. Very dangerous conditions out there. And this is the Idaho Panhandle Avalanche Center. So check that out, too. And landslides are still a threat as we go into these next few days of precipitation continuing. Sometimes these landslides occur days after the event, so heads up. Generally areas <clears throat> Seattle south, but really any of the Seattle metropolitan area could see, you know, it has landslide potential out of this. And especially slopes like into the Cascades and the, or and the Oregon and uh, Washington coastal ranges. Really any high terrain, Seattle south is in a landslide uh, predicament as we speak <clears throat> so the rest of the country going on in the next week this is for this weekend there's just a, a risk for some severe weather and this is going to extend down into the southeast so if you have concerns in the eastern portions of the country heads up for that going on into next weekend so taking a look at what we're dealing with now there's the atmospheric river going into oregon there and then you can see this kind of double back over oregon again as we go on into wednesday morning and this it's going to continue this precipitation off and on all the way through western Washington, through portions of eastern Washington and northeast Oregon. And it's going to continue this concern for some avalanche danger going on into the panhandle of Idaho as that moisture continues to filter through there. And then finally, you'll see that dry air arrive as this system finally moves out of the area. And this storm system moves down and brings some much needed rain to California. And you can see the other atmospheric rivers going on across the Pacific Ocean. Atmospheric rivers are a normal thing. They're always ongoing. A lot of times the Pacific has three of them going at, uh, at any given time. It's just when they line up and they're impacting portions of our areas where we have, you know, big mountains and a lot of terrain and a lot of hillsides that can are prone to avalanches. And, you know, that water has to run off somewhere. It goes into the rivers and causes flooding. So it is of concern to us. And here we are looking at currently the you can see the precipitation continuing on into Oregon as this atmospheric river kind of buckles north again, even though it's not as strong as it has been the last couple of days. And you can see that precip continuing all the way into Idaho, northeast Oregon, into Montana, western Washington. It continues on into about Thursday. And we finally dry out on Friday as that system moves through and down in through the Intermountain West and down through California. Here are the winds. You can see the winds are just now ending on the Oregon coast. Finally, as the system moves up towards Vancouver Island, it's weakening quite rapidly. So it's not going to bring any high winds to the area here. And then you can see we get kind of a wind shift back to the north. We might get some kind of convergence zone feature there. Wednesday evening on into Thursday, maybe even into Thursday afternoon. We'll have to see how that plays out. But then you can see the system dive down. And generally weak winds. We get some offshore winds on into the on into next week and their precipitation total so this marks this morning here so you can see there's additional rain still going on here so we are not done with some of these flooding concerns and landslide potential around the region as we go into wednesday night you can see the rain starting to fall again for seattle as it hits the cascades of oregon washington the coastal ranges and you can see it funneling uh through there the uh, the Columbia River Valley there on into Idaho Panhandle with some pretty good precipitation amounts. Extreme avalanche danger out there. Here's the high resolution, kind of highlights the terrain that's getting that really heavy rainfall. See the Oregon Cascades are not done, but it efficiently blocks that rainfall from really getting into the drought-stricken regions in the eastern Oregon, which they drastically need rainfall. And this goes on in through Thursday. 
So you can see where that atmospheric river is pointed for the next couple of days, even though it has been weakened. Now let's look into, this is European last night's run. This is just a control run here. So you can see this trough and the high pressure spawning our atmospheric river conditions. As we go into Wednesday and on into Thursday morning, you can see that sharp trough digging out over the southwest. And this one generally misses us. It's the high, this ridge, this high pressure builds back over the region. But then you can see another system kind of carve out a sharp trough over the Pacific Northwest here. This would be on into next week. And then you can see another polar lobe kind of gets out over us here too. This wouldn't, probably not going to be an Arctic air setup or anything like that into the lowlands or anything, but this can, you know, this can spawn some powerful convergent zones. It can bring some wind, some heavy mountain snows. We'll have to see how this goes, but this is at the further reaches of the European here. European has been definitely showing these troughs and systems impacting the Pacific Northwest more than the GFS and the Canadian. So it's something we're trying to reconcile here, trying to see if the models are going to come to some kind of agreement in the extended. And we'll go into that a little bit more here in a minute. So here's the control of the, the European ensemble last night, the big ridging. And then that trough, look at that thing, just dig out over us. This is going on into early mid-March. And then you can see more powerful systems on into the extended into mid-March. They're rolling through the regions. It looks like more of a windstorm pattern there. But of course, we're way out into the extended. This is just kind of for entertainment purposes only. And we're just trying to get a handle on what is coming. And really, it's not telling us that much when the models aren't in agreement right now. Even though I do tend to favor the euro, you can't just point at this and say, hey, this is coming at this time range. You know, this is well into mid-March here. This is the European ensemble. This is just a average of all the ensemble runs here. And you can see the big ridging. So pretty good agreement for that. And then you can see that troughing as it's mainly over the, you know, the central portions of the US, but it does extend out over. So there is some agreement in the ensembles. And then it shows this troughing out over the Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska into the extended. But now looking at the GFS this morning's ensemble mean, Good agreement on that trough digging out over the southwest and the high pressure building here through this weekend. So we're, you know, we've got pretty good confidence there. And it kind of shows a weakness behind the ridge here. And that's what the European develops more of. And the GFS kind of keeps this troughing over the uh, mountainous west more as the ridging kind of keeps stuff away from us. But then, it, you know, this does get pretty close. So there is a little bit of agreement that there's going to be some troughing nearby into the extended. And then on into the future, even further, it does show some of that Gulf of Alaska troughing going on, even though it does keep a ridge over the, the west coast here as well. Now let's take a look at the Canadian mean. Ensemble mean, again, this is just an average of all the ensembles here. And you can see that again, good agreement with that troughing and the ridging building. Shows a little bit of that weakness coming down on the east side of this ridge that's generally agreed upon. But you can see it keeps this troughing much further west over the Intermountain West and even over the plains and the northern states here. But on into the extended, it does show this troughing developing out over the Gulf of Alaska, which would bring a more stormy pattern for us as well. So we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, is this going to play out to be a nice brisk wind going down and bring us a few days of nice sunshine and decent temperatures and maybe a couple chilly nights? Or is this going to be a more stagnant pattern? Will this trough set up in a little more of a feature where we're not getting as much wind and we get more stagnant? Or will this fully open up like the European model is saying? And something I also wanted to do here, let's go ahead and look at the GFS, the 06Z run, just the control run and kind of see what it's showing. So here goes the trough, good agreement there. There's the ridging building there. This is into this weekend. And you can kind of see that little weakness behind it. Gets a little bit close to our region, but the ridge stays firm on the GFS, so troughing much farther east. And then you can see a system finally break through the ridge here going on into the following weekend. And a little more Gulf of Alaska troughing showing up in the extended. So there is some agreement on the overall pattern, but the European has systems impacting us much more on the backside of that ridge into the future. And let's just see how far the 12Z goes out here. Yeah, it's, the 12Z is run. So let's check out the 12Z here, uh, GFS here. And it drops a little system down over us there next weekend. That's a little bit of a change. Yeah, yeah, here we go. The good old GFS is now going towards the European. So 
you discovered this real time with me and this is why I, I like to favor the European model. Look at this ridging now driving this north flow and cutting this shaping the sharp trough over us onto the west coast and this ridge goes away really quickly rebuilds off and on more transient ridge action there transient ridge is just something that kind of builds and then goes away with the next trough but yeah you can see how big the gfs just flopped there and that's much more in line with what the european is showing so this is kind of an intriguing system going on into uh further on into next week so after next weekend this is more of a favorable pattern for some active weather would be big mountain snows and something like this potentially snowfall in the lower elevations of eastern portions of the state and you know you can get convection heavy mountain snows all kinds of fun stuff out of this so this is something to watch for sure and we will check this out more tomorrow and see if these models come into a more agreement i'll watch the models tonight and we'll try to get a handle on what's coming in our future and we'll also look at this you know, we're, we still have some more precipitation to go through, and there's some going to be some landslide threat. There is a whole bunch of rain that fell, as you guys saw. Oh, by the way, the passes are open too. But as you guys saw, there's a lot of rainfall that happened in here, and there's some more coming through Thursday. So we need to watch out, you know, for landslide potential, and there is some flooding going on. So stay tuned to your local forecasts, and we'll discuss this more tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a good day. Bye.